Go ahead and mute everybody. All right. Okay, so equipment you're gonna to need today is the usual, but I'm gonna add one thing. So if you've got your letter ball or a ball shaped object of some sort, remember something that's interesting for your eyes to look at. Uh, and then two pens, oh, there it is, oh my gosh. For the past five minutes, I was looking for my other pencil and it was in the crack of my couch. <laughs> okay, two pens, two pencils, um, something with letters on it. And then today also, if you have a TheraBand of some sort, grab your TheraBand. If you don't, don't worry about it. We're just gonna use this to do um, one of our breathing techniques today. Um, if you have, if all you have is tubing, like a Thera tube, that will work too. But a Thera band is nice because um, the broadness of the band is really helpful um, for some of the one of the breathing techniques we're going to do. So have that handy if you have it. If you don't, again, not not a big deal. Okay, um, and then remember for this class because we work the visual and vestibular system, you might find that you have tired eyes, itchy eyes, um, watery eyes. You might get a little dizzy or nauseous when we do some of the vestibular work. That is all okay, but it means that you've met your edge and we don't wanna to go too far past your edge. So listen to your body, do what feels good. You can always close your eyes and take a break if you need to. All right. Tilt that down quite a bit more. All right. So we'll just come back to a seated or standing ground position here. I'm just gonna have you start with a few head and neck rolls. So just really slowly rolling the head around. Just noticing how the upper body is feeling. Switch directions. Okay, we'll come back to the center. We'll find a still point and we'll close the eyes. Now let's find the sandwich with our hands today. So one hand can come to the low belly and one to the low back if you can reach that area. If not, you can just have both hands on the low belly. And trying to direct your breath into this area. So we, it's, it's easy to feel the breath into the low belly or it might be for you. <clears throat> But once you get the hang of that, noticing if you can start to feel that breath into your low back also. Trying to breathe through your nose. Try and slow your breath down. And finding how that breath is really three-dimensional. So it's, it can fill the whole three-dimensional area of our trunk, of our bellies and backs, of our rib cages. <clears throat> and maybe just feeling your weight either on the chair under you or the floor under your feet. To wiggle the toes around if you're able to. We'll take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna come back to those head and neck rolls. But as you do this, I want you to bring your spine into this a little bit more. 
So the whole spine and the neck is circling around your hips, but let your head lead the way. So when the head goes forward, the spine goes forward. And the spine just kind of follows around. Switch directions. Staying with an even breath here. And then on your next one, I want you to roll all the way down to the ground. Just let your body be heavy here. Taking a couple of breath, breaths, take a couple of breaths into the back of the ribs, into that low back that you were just holding. And then slowly roll yourself back up. Good. Tip your head up at the top. Look up. Hold up for a moment. What's the furthest thing up on the ceiling that you can see? And then tuck your chin in and roll back down. And again, just letting arms and everything be heavy here. Take an inhale at the bottom, and then exhale, roll up. Tilting the head up. What's the furthest thing up on the ceiling you can see? Can you go a little bit further than you just were? Holding that for a few seconds. And then tucking the chin in, we'll just do one more of those and rolling back down. Inhale at the bottom and exhale up. Last time, tilting that head back. Can you go a little bit further with your eyes? And then back to the center, relax. And then we'll bring fingertips to that area under the collarbone and we'll find our gentle taps there. <clears throat> yeah, and let's add a few hums into this today. And let's do our hums um, at different, different tunes here. So we're gonna do a low hum, a medium hum and a high hum. Okay, and just same, same thing that we always do, taking your hum all the way to the end of your breath. Hmm. And then when you get to the next one, it will be a little bit higher. Hmm. And when we get to the last one, it will be even higher. Hmm. Okay, so just challenging the throat, the neck in a different way. Hmm. Okay, good. And then I want you to brush your chest off like you're getting water off your chest, off your belly, off your back if you can reach it. Get the water off one of your arms, wiping it from high to low. Oh, we'll do the other arm. Now let's give a little bit more love to the joints today. So just grab one of your shoulders, maybe just the top of that shoulder and just find a rub. Almost as if you were putting lotion on the top of your shoulder. And just noticing as you're doing just Feeling for the bony parts of your shoulder. Noticing the softer, squishier parts of your shoulder. And noticing if you've got any tender areas. Okay, relax for just a sec. Just notice the sides between those two shoulders. Okay, hopefully you've got a little bit 
more awareness, more aliveness in that rubbed out shoulder. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So you can start kind of soft, like you're putting lotion on the top of the shoulder. And you can start to really feel some of the bony parts, the softer parts, the tender parts. If it's hard for you to reach your shoulder, you can do more your chest, like in the front, kind of in front on the inside part of your armpit, if that's easier for you to reach. Yeah, and then just sit with that for a sec, feeling the change in both sides. And we'll do that same thing for the rest of the arm. So we'll come to the elbows, one of your elbows, and just giving it a rub, like, First, you're rubbing lotion on the elbow. And be gentle in this area because you've got your funny bone, which is actually a nerve that runs through here. So we don't want to squish that area too much. But just noticing like, okay, this is, there's a bony part here. There's a bony part here. Nope. We'll do the other side. The joints can hold a lot of extra energy. So giving them a rub, bringing more awareness, more proprioception to them can be really helpful. We'll come to the wrist. And however you want to do this, if you want to circle your hand around your wrist, if you want to use your knuckles and rub your wrist out, but just bringing your full attention and awareness to that wrist. And then to the knuckles on the top of your hand. And noticing like, are your hands cold right now? Is one side colder than the other side? Okay. And then we'll switch going over to the other wrist. Rubbing that area. Noticing the tender parts if there's any. <clears throat> and then giving the knuckles a rub. Okay, good. We'll shake the hands and the arms out. Okay. And then let's get the water off of the rest of your lower body. So wiping down through the thighs. If you can reach the shins and the calves, then wipe the water off that area. And if you can reach the top of your feet, you can do that too. And then just again, taking both hands, giving your rub, your uh, knees a rub, if you can reach your knees. Feeling the bony parts, the squishy parts the tender parts. And you can stay on the knees or if you're able to reach your ankles, do the same thing with your ankles. Noticing the bony part on the outside of the ankle and on the inside of the ankle. You can give the tops of your feet a rub if you can reach that. Okay, and then we'll come up tall, give everything a shake. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come into our swinging rotation. Knuckles tap the opposite low back. There we go. Yeah, and then as knuckles top, uh, tap the opposite low back, can the front hand tap the opposite shoulder? Shoulder, chest area. There we go, there we go, yep. A few more. Okay, and then back to the center. Excuse me, okay, let's do a, an ear release. So I'm just gonna zoom in. 
So we're gonna do the same thing we did last week. So grabbing your ear lobes, if you're able to grab your ear lobes, or you can use your knuckles to move your ears around if that's easier. And you're gonna pull the ears straight away, out and away from each other. So just creating more space, like you're kind of making a silly face at someone, but trying to create more space in that area in between the two ears. Okay, and as we do this, we are gonna make some silly faces here, but I want you to start by not holding your breath, but you're gonna fill your whole mouth with air, like you're trying to be a monkey, hmm? but still breathing through your nose. So you don't have to hold your breath here. Okay, good, release the ears, keep the, keep the puffy, mouth. I need a better word for that. Keep the air in your mouth. And now pull your ears up to the sky or push your ears up to the sky, whatever you can do. And then I want you to take the air and I want you to circle it around in your mouth. The air goes in one cheek through the lower lip into the other cheek and then in the upper lip. And I'll just so show you here. Mm hmm mm hmm circling that air around and then switch directions. Without letting any air out. Mm hmm mm hmm Okay, good, relax. Release the ears, shake the hands out. Yeah, so that actually takes a really good amount of control and muscle um, from the whole upper and lower jaw. It also gives a nice stretch to the cheeks, depending on how much air you can get in there. So I don't know if any of you felt that, but um, just kind of nice to do that too. Okay, uh, yes. And then last one, we're gonna take the knuckles up at the cheekbones. Let your jaw go slack. So before you even rub it out, just let your jaw hang open. That's it. And then finding that rub from your cheekbones down to your lower jaw, staying on that soft tissue band, kind of in the back part of your jaw. Letting the jaw stay slack as you do it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just noticing, is there a side of your jaw that feels tighter? Yeah, just do it one more time. Okay, good. We're gonna do one more. We haven't done this one. So I want you to be really gentle. You're gonna take either your thumbs or your knuckles and you're gonna come to the, um, to the floor of your mouth. So under your chin, fingers go under your chin. And you're just gonna find a really gentle muscle. I'm gonna tilt my head up so you all can see me. You're gonna find a really gentle rub from your chin going back towards the back of your head. I'm only dragging my fingers maybe an inch or two I'm not suffocating. I'm not closing my airway off at all. I'm just staying on the soft tissue that is the floor of your mouth. This is a really small movement. Again, let everything relax. So like, don't talk, don't hum, don't do anything. Just find, and this is, this is really gentle. This should not be painful. It should not be uncomfortable. You might feel some tightness but we don't wanna go into the pain at all. I'm just gonna watch people here for a minute. Yeah, okay, go ahead and relax, shake the hands up. Okay, now let's do some neck. Yeah, yeah, Bonnie, go for it. Were your thumbs staying together or are they coming apart in a V? Yeah, that's a good question. They're coming apart a little bit. So they're, they're not staying together. Yeah, you, um, it's not bad. They can stay together. You can get this more central part of your chin, but um, it, 
it might just be easier access to let the thumbs separate. Yeah, because most people are a little bit more restricted and tighter in here. So I just, it, yeah, it's, and I should have said that, but it's let your thumbs separate. It's just kind of easier to, you're kind of tracing the bone. Yeah, tracing the bone of the lower jaw. But if you want to try, you can go straight down the chin. Yeah, okay. Um, ooh. <laughs> I did a workout yesterday, so my back is a little sore, having a hard time getting up and down. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna do some neck movements here. Let me adjust my screen. Okay, so just find a, finding a head, head tilt to your left and to your right. We didn't do a check and a recheck, but just noticing how this feels. Sometimes doing a bit of a jaw release and a floor of the mouth release can, can help um, release some tension in the neck. Come back to the center, just the neck, the head and the neck will turn and look over one shoulder and then turn and look over the other shoulder. Just going back and forth and noticing how that feels for you. Okay, good. And then last thing here, finding a, a pigeon head. So gliding the head forward and back like you're a pigeon. Remember your head stays parallel with the ground. So it's not tipping or bending. It's just doing a glide forward and back. There we go, there we go, nice everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Now tuck that chin in all the way. Tuck your head down and then just find a half roll down. So you don't have to go all the way down, just rounding through the upper back, but really, really tucking the chin into the throat. Take an inhale. And then exhale to roll up. Yeah, and relax. Okay. Let's grab your letter ball. Okay, if you've been playing with me, go ahead and go right into playing letter ball. Um, if you're new, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk you through it. Make sure that camera is, okay. So if you're new, holding that, that ball into your chest, you're gonna pull it away from your chest at any angle you want. You'll look at the ball, you'll say the first letter number you see, and then you'll pull it back in. Pull it away at a different angle. Say the first letter number you see, pull it back in. And you're just gonna to continue to do that. Moving the ball all the way around your body. different angles behind you, in front of you, below you. If you're able to play catch with yourself, then you can play catch with yourself. And make this challenging. It's okay if you don't catch the ball, it means you're finding your edge. You can use one hand, but you can use both hands. Mm -hmm. Do several more throws there, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna layer on. Okay. Good. So let's layer on. I'm the first layer. I'm just gonna do brain speed here. I'm gonna give you three things to remember with this first layer, though. Okay. So if you catch a letter, 
you're going to shrug both shoulders up. Okay. Actually, you know what? Wait, I'm sorry. The three layers, I'm going to define a little bit more. If you catch a um, consonant, you're going to lift left shoulder. You're just going to shrug up the left shoulder. If you're able to lift that left arm or lift the left leg, then you can do that too. Okay. So letter is left side. I'm sorry, consonant, everybody. Oh my goodness, I'm confusing everyone. Consonant, you do left side. Vowel, you do right side. Consonant left, vowel right. Consonant left, vowel right. If you catch a number, you're gonna tilt your head up and look at the ceiling, okay? So number, head tilt up. Consonant left, vowel right. Number, look up, consonant left, vowel right. Okay, do we think we have it? <laughs> I'm giving you three, <laughs> I'm, I'll remind you as, as you play. I'm giving you three things to think of. Okay, so this is a little harder than usual, but go ahead and go right into playing that again, whether you're throwing and catching or moving around your body. For a number, you look up. For a consonant, you lift the left shoulder. For a vowel, you lift the right shoulder. Number, you look up. Consonant, left shoulder, vowel, right shoulder. Yeah, your eyes, I should be following the ball. There we go. I should follow the ball each time you move it. That's it. Yeah, nice Lynn. Yeah, so keep playing. So remember the purpose of these is the whole pathway that our brain has to go through of see, decide, act. See something in front of you, make a decision, a quick decision, and then act, meaning that's the movement part where you're shrugging a, sh shrugging a shoulder, something like that. So we're working on your, qu quite literally, your brain speed here. See, decide, act. See, decide, act. So you're trying to make those decisions as quick as possible. We're just sharpening that visual to brain decision. We're sharpening that pathway. That's the pathway that we're working on when we play these brain speed games. We're working on the see, decide, and then the act just follows. Yeah, maybe just do four or five more throws. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and relax. It gets easier. Yeah, I noticed people were getting faster as you get the hang of it. It just takes a while to get the hang of it. Okay. Um, actually, wait, I'm not going to pick those up yet. Let's do a, a little bit of spinal mobility and then we'll come into some more visual games here. Okay, so let's bring hands to the hips. Yeah, uh, give you my side profile here. And we're going to start with our tuck and our lift of our pelvis. If it's hard for you to connect to the pelvis, I want you to do the tuck and the lift coming more from the ribs. So rounding the spine and then lifting the spine or tucking the pelvis and lifting the pelvis. Okay, so whatever you've got access to. If you're standing, you're doing the same, same movement just from a standing position. Exhale to tuck or round. Inhale to lift. Exhale, tuck. Inhale, lift. And notice how when you do this, your head follows. Okay, so that's something called head tail connectivity. So when you round the spine or tuck the tail, the chin naturally drops down a little bit. When you lift the spine, the head naturally tilts up. 
Okay, so the head and the tail follow each other. Both extend, both round. Both extend and both round. And then we'll come back to the center. Okay. And then we're gonna move that into our lateral rib translation to the left and to the right. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, remember for this one, ribs stay parallel with the floor. And we're gonna layer on some breath work with this, but just getting the movement in our spines first. Mm -hmm. Okay, now as you find that translation, if you're able to, I want you to find your butt cheek lift. Okay, so I want you to pretend like you just sat in, in gum under your left butt cheek and you're like, ew, gross, trying to lift your, your left butt cheek out. And the ribs are shifting with you. Everything is like really trying to stay out of that gum. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Get your other butt cheek out of the gum and then back to the center. Feel free to either hold on to the sides of your chair or do whatever you need to do to support yourself. And if you're standing, you can just start to come, if you feel safe, to come into a single leg balance. Shift onto one foot, lift the other. Shift onto one foot, lift the other. You can come onto your tiptoes if you want more of a challenge. There you go, there you go. Yeah, so getting some high hips in there if you're seated. Okay, and then back to the center. Okay. We're gonna keep playing with this breath work that we've been working on the past few weeks. So I'm gonna have you take, if you have your TheraBand, I'm gonna have you take your TheraBand and trying to keep the TheraBand really broad you're going to tie the TheraBand around your ribs. Again, if you don't have the TheraBand, really don't worry about it. You'll still be able to do all of this. We're just using this TheraBand as a feedback tool for this breath work. Okay, so trying to keep that TheraBand broad and kind of right, right over your ribs, but kind of more at the base of your ribs as opposed to like under your chest your rib area under your chest, and you just can tie it in front. Okay, so you feel the feedback. It's not squeezing the air out of you or anything, but you feel the feedback um, of that TheraBand. Okay, if you're still getting set up, take your time. I'm just gonna start to talk you through this. So we're gonna go back to working on a couple of those breaths. So we're all pretty familiar at this point with that low belly breath. So let's just start with that. We'll put both hands under, uh, over the low belly. You can close your eyes if that's helpful. And finding that low belly breath that we always start class with. So this is our relaxation breath. <clears throat> and just as a reminder here, this is the breath where we're trying to avoid breathing into our high chest. We're just trying to breathe into our low belly. So if you were filling a vase with water, it fills from the bottom to the top. So that's what we wanna do with our breath here. Okay. And notice as you're taking these breaths, you maybe feel a little bit of movement into your TheraBand or a little bit of movement into your ribs, but it's not a whole lot. And maybe you do feel a lot of movement into the TheraBand and that's okay too. So we're just, we're just gonna play with this. Take one more belly breath there. Okay, and then we're gonna come into this rib breath. So, <clears throat> sitting nice and tall and feeling the pressure of TheraBand around your ribs. If you don't have a TheraBand, you can put your hands high on your ribs or your knuckles, whatever's comfortable for you. Okay, so now we're gonna take what we call your lateral rib breath. 
So you're trying to find the expansion of your, of your ribs out and then back in. So as you take an inhale, feeling your ribs pressing into the TheraBand. And then on your exhale, your rib cage naturally comes back in. Don't force anything here. So no, no holding. Let your breath be easy. Your breath doesn't even have to be that big. Like you don't even have to take a big gulp of air. Just seeing if you can now direct your breath more into the back and the side of your ribs, as opposed to directly into your low belly. So I'll just show you, this is might be kind of hard to see with my black top here, but taking a breath into there, you'll see there's kind of a widening of the rib cage. And then it comes back in. This is a really subtle movement. You can close your eyes if that's helpful for you. And just seeing if you can start to feel that rib breath there. And maybe noticing, is it easier to feel that breath in one side more in the other? And if it's hard for you to feel, then take a bigger breath, pull in more oxygen. If it's easy for you to feel, try to bring your breath back to a normal volume and see if you can breathe more into your lower back ribs and less into your high chest ribs. Okay, so now we're really trying to bring the breath into the back side ribs without disturbing the chest too much. The chest will have a little bit, a little bit of movement, but we're really, I'm really trying to open up this space, like where my wings, like where my wings would come out of my back, just kind of right at the bottom part of my shoulder blades wrapping around the side of my body. That's where I want you to really feel that, that rib breath. Okay. You can keep your eyes closed, but now we're just gonna bring movement into this. So you can keep the, the TheraBand on you. We're gonna come back to our same translation we were just doing, okay? but I'm gonna have you translate to the right and hold. And I want you to take a breath into those right ribs and then back to the center. Translate left, take a breath into the left ribs and center. Uh -huh. Translate, take an inhale and center. Translate, take an inhale and center. Okay, so keep going. Keep, stay with that same movement, stay with that same breath. So I was talking about this last week. When we combine really intentional breath work with really intentional movement, it allows for kind of the local level and the global level, just meaning on a cellular level and on a bigger level, it allows us to access a little bit more spinal mobility, a little bit more rib cage mobility, and more soft tissue mobility with all of the muscles and soft tissues in between the ribs. Okay, when we move through these movements really fast, it's not bad. It's just that it's hard to really take a breath into those areas, expand those areas, and stretch those areas using our breath as opposed to using just movement. So when we can combine breath with movement, it just makes the, it makes the whole thing a little bit more powerful um, and uh, incorporates more of the tissues at the local level and at the global level. 
Okay, good. And back to center. We're just gonna do one more here. So bring right arm up really high up, like you're reaching for something high and then take a side bend over. Take an inhale into the open ribs and exhale to center. Left hand up and reach, side bend. Inhale into the open ribs and center. Hand up, inhale to side bend. Exhale, center. Side bend. And center. Yeah, one more each way. Inhale into the side bend and center. Inhale into the side bend and center and relax. Okay. You can go ahead and take that band off, but it's just something I want you to think about. So using that breath as you do those spinal movements and stretches, that's something that you can think about not just in this class, but in all of the other classes you might take and all of the, your other daily movements you do throughout your day. Okay, so that's, you can carry this with you into whatever you're doing. Okay, go ahead and grab one of your pencils. Let's just do one or two more visual things and then we'll wrap up here. Okay, so you're gonna hold that pencil out in front of you. And I want your eyes to lock on a, a, a single letter. And you're just gonna start without moving your head, you're gonna move that pencil in a big circle around you. As big of a circle as you can where that letter still stays in focus with, excuse me, without your head moving. For folks that are blind or visually impaired, I want you to do big head and neck circles. Remember the faster you go, the harder it gets and you're working more of your vestibular system here. For everybody, let's do 10 circles in one direction, 10 circles in the other direction. We haven't done these exact ones in a while. These are a really good basic one to use for an, as an assessment tool. And you're noticing what parts of this circle are really uncomfortable for your eyes to look at. For a lot of people, some of the upper corners are harder. You might notice looking one way, maybe looking left is harder for you than to look right. So just noticing like what parts of that circle is just a little bit more challenging for your eyes to follow that pencil. And just so I know, when you've done 10 in each direction, go ahead and set that pencil down and then find a roll down towards the ground. The faster you move the pencil, the harder it gets. So you can play with your speed there also, but make sure you can still see that letter as you track that pencil around. But for those of you that are rolled down, go ahead and pull yourself back up. Let's bring both arms up to the sky. We'll interlace the fingers, open the chest, pulling everything forward. And then circle the arms down and around, interlace the fingers behind you, or pull the arms behind you and open up your chest. Okay, good. Give the arms a shake. Give the shoulders and the ribs a shake. You can swing your arms into a rotation. All right. <clears throat> good, and we'll come back to the center. We'll find the still point here. We'll close the eyes. A 
And then we'll come back to that low belly breath. So both, or sorry, one hand over the low belly, one over the low back if you can reach it. And then noticing if anything has changed there for you. Is that breath easier? Can you feel it more in one area or the other? Does it still feel really hard to breathe into your low belly? Because that's okay. This is definitely a practice. Feel your, the weight of your body either down through your chair or down through your feet on the floor. Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. We'll take one more inhale, one more exhale. And we'll open the eyes. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining. I know that was a lot of breath work today, but um, we'll just keep layering on with that over the next few weeks.